in her diaries and, and her, her journals and her letters, talks a lot about trying to establish a little school because there are children starting to come into the community and they have no uh, uh, understanding of reading or writing and so she frequently had people come to her house and she would teach them um, you know for two or three uh, maybe two days a week and then then I guess when the church was established the minister also took on a bit of a schooling of the children but most of it was through her and she would write home to her brother her older brother who was still in England to send more books or to um, maybe get up a little uh, bazaar or some sort of fundraising thing to help build a schoolhouse or to add things to the church. So um, she really put her heart and soul into developing uh, the community and trying to educate and uh, create a, um, a settlement which had you know, some sort of life, life to it, not just existing in the backwoods but doing things that were familiar but also uh, unique. One of the things that she <laughs> she has mixed feelings about are, are the regattas, which are the boat races that happen. And uh, she, she, she says at one point, oh, it's, it's like regatta fever on the lakes right now. Everybody's talking about him and building boats for the regatta. And of course, anything like that that happened always meant that there was a tremendous amount of work for the women involved because they were to provide all the food. And so, <laughs> so it, it, while she always embraces the, the responsibilities that are given to her, she also has a little bit of, she had a wonderful sense of humor, you know, and she'd say things like, um, well, I'm glad to say that there was not one drunken man amongst them. <laughs> it's interesting to note that, that John, younger brother John, who, of whom she was tremendously fond, like totally devoted, he eventually married one of the Dunsford girls. And Anne's feelings about the Dunsford, you would, she writes quite a lot about a lot of the settlers, but she's very cautious about what she says about the Dunsfords. And one gets the feeling that she, she was just either a little bit mm, suspicious that they had a, an attitude about them. For example, she says, well, we've heard that the Dunsfords are coming out and uh, they're bringing a, a, what was she saying? a carriage with them. And then her next line is, I hope they don't forget to bring a good road too. <laughs> Which just struck me as being, <laughs> she's got there, she's got a, a, an image of them. And then, you know, when she talks about going down to pay a, a, a call, a hospitality call, when they've arrived in the country, she lets slip, well, it's entirely the sleigh ride that I look forward to and not the call. <laughs> <laughs> so she, you know, she, she's very witty and but very gracious about everything and, you know, it, when it's clear that John is interested in one of the Dunsfords, she says, I'm sure he'll find an excuse to pay a visit to the Dunsfords with giving them some, some flower seeds from the garden or whatever. <laughs> so I, I have no idea how she got on with Lydia Dunsford, who is the one who eventually marries John. But, uh, but she's very gracious and generous always with it, but always a little sense of humor.